cows or that's a really good bet. I did it a couple of times and also some people visited uh, my family. And yeah, it's really nice. You can make some good friends uh, with it. Uh, the stamp, stamp email, so we built the King's Network is uh, the first crowdsourced network where uh, people share internet together. It's not a uh, broadband internet, but more uh, for IoT devices, let's say, uh, switching your light on or off. That is possible by that. And people sharing uh, some kind, it's not a Wi Fi router, but some kind of a route that's called the gateway. And by that gateway, we have access to uh, those internet of things network without paying money anymore. Uh, maps, so you paid for maps in the, in the past. Uh, I say now you have like Google Maps or OpenStreetMap, uh, but also a drill. Uh, you can go to Facebook and if your uh, neighborhood have uh, a Facebook group, you can ask your neighbor, say, who have a drill or uh, uh, a year ago I needed a tent. And then I asked the neighbor, say, who, who have a tent, I get something like five answers. Oh, you can uh, have mine. Um, so that is also really nice. Uh, education, I already told that. Um, still, uh, nowadays, people uh, are paying for books, but I think it's not necessary anymore because there are so many uh, high end education uh, available open on the internet. And we also see seats to meet co working spaces. So in the past, you paid uh, for uh, your office uh, and it's pay a lot of rent for it, like 200 euros or so in a month. And now you can go to a location and pay by social capital, which means you don't pay by money, but more by your knowledge or so, by helping the society that's working there. Uh, so yeah, you share knowledge, but also some you can ask somebody else about his or her knowledge. Uh, so if you can go to the next slide. So another question for you, um, the technologies are yeah, growing exponentially. For example, I'm wearing my Oculus uh, guest uh, set now. So now we can be here all together from all over the world uh, in virtual reality. Uh, but which another emerging technologies will turn our economic system upside down, like as the mobile smartphone did? Um, so if you can turn the microphones back on. Yeah, microphones will be on. Great. Uh, to some answers of you, which technologies do you have in mind? Blockchain, of course. Sorry? Blockchain. 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 Thank you. Another one? AI. AI, yes. Artificial intelligence. Good one. Are there more? It's a bit harder question. So let's go to the next slide and see um, what's what's going on around now by technologies. So you see autonomous car, where we told that they're, they're driving here. Uh, uh, if you look uh, outside in the windows, you see the, the cars driving around. But of course, also in the real world, there are more and more uh, autonomous cars going around. Uh, I'm currently in Vietnam. Um, uh, yeah, traveling for eight months uh, through Asia, but I, uh, a couple of years ago in the Netherlands, my uh, home country, um, I went on an autonomous bus and drove around uh, in some uh, area in, in that country. It was really, really nice experience. It wasn't going past something like 20, 30 kilometers per hour and there were some bugs, but yeah, it's still a very nice experience that you can uh, sit in a bus and you don't see any driver anymore. Um, robots, they don't hear that from you, but I see some robots here around in the audience. And some of you are filming, and one of them is my friend Carol, is also here as a, a robot. Um, but yeah, in uh, real life, there are, uh, of course, also more and more, more robots. And it's interesting to see what they're able to do nowadays. And also that some of them I really look like human. If you go to search on YouTube for Sophia and the robot, she really likes to look uh, human, is able to interact with people uh, on a humanized uh, base. Uh, AI also be taught by one of you. It's uh, using Elon Musk here, Neuralink. He is thinking that uh, AI is getting more 
uh, smarter than us as people. So he is building something that's called Neuralink, uh, some kind of device to connect with your brain. And he's thinking if you connect all human brains, maybe then we can still communicate with AI, AI or a bit smarter. Uh, it's very interesting to see that as well. Now, of course, virtual reality, we are already uh, aware of that, right? We, we are in virtual reality now. Um, blockchain, also told by, by one of you, see the Bitcoin logo here. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, but the technology by, behind it is called blockchain. Uh, it's very interesting technology because people are not able to crowd anymore. What's on that database can be seen as a truth because it's decentralized. It's uh, yeah, a database at all our computer devices. Um, also, then here are 3D printing. I'm going to show you some more, more examples in a couple of minutes. And drones. Yeah, for example, drones can uh, drive around, bring you a package, uh, uh, and so on. So also interesting to, to see that kind of technologies. Um, so yeah, be aware because that, that those technologies can change the world, just as the smartphone is is doing uh, the last years. So Tim, if you can go to next map. Uh, so this is a video that's starting automatically, right? So what you see here is a, a 3D, uh, a 3D printer building a house. So you see it go layer by layer, but it yeah, looks slow, but at the end of the day, you, you have to have 3D printed. And um, uh, yeah, that's, that's a very interesting thing that, that's happened now. Um, if you can go to the next slide, I'm not sure if it's possible because I had some problems with it. Let's see, yeah. Um, so if you can open the microphones for you all, I'm curious, which you may think the cost will be about 14 to 3D print a house. Any ideas? Microphones are now on. Please shout out what is in your mind? What will a 3D printed house cost in 2014? 100,000 euros. 100,000 euros, okay. Anybody else, lower or higher? No one? Okay, the one that say one of the thousand shows, what did you think it would cost in 2018? Still there? Yeah, we're still here. The microphones are okay. definitely open. Okay, uh, somebody said 100,000 euros for 2014. What's in your mind for 2018? Less. Less, but how, how much less? 10,000 for 2018. Okay, then if you can go to the next slide. <laughs> oh no, not in 2018, sorry, in next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 2014 was not one of the thousand euros, but the 10,000 oh. euros that Dana was expecting for uh, oh. 2018. But in 2018, it costs around 1,000 euro uh, dollar. So, um, of course, you, you need the ground, that, that's the most expensive, depending on where you are. But uh, uh, to 3D print it, it's only like that amount of money you, you need. So, uh, if you think about that, like the cost of the, uh, the HD game camera, that costs 5,000 euro, and now you have it in your smartphone. Uh, uh, let's see what it will cost in something like five years, and when it's more available for, for people. So that's an interesting one to take in mind. So you can go to the next slide then. Okay, another video I want to show you about 3D printing. Bent.
So, wow, $25 for a protested hand. We decrypt it in 12 hours. Uh, and people that like to donate to it are able to do that by their website. Really cool initiative. But if you put really deep into yourself, you can also open source download this model on Thingiverse. Uh, so then you can really print your, yourself. So very interesting thing, if you compare that to a hospital, if you go there for your protesting hands, you pay around 5,000 US dollars. 5,000 US dollars compared with 25 US dollars. Wow, it's amazing. So it's also thanks to the deep printing technology that made this possible. If you can go to the next slide. So here's another example of deep printing, but then with food. Uh, this is from a company in the, the Netherlands it's called Mosa Meat. And what they are doing, they're creating meat from stem cells. And with this one stem cell, they are able to produce around 80,000 uh, yeah, burgers. So one stem cell, 80,000 burgers. So there, by technology, there will also be an uh, abundance of food. But I think there is already uh, some abundance of food. For example, seeds to meet the co-working space uh, I told about. Uh, they sharing the food if you're doing social capital uh, really well at an organization you are able to uh, have your lunch there uh, without paying any money and they're able to do that because they're really smart in how they handle the, the food because the, the rooms uh, that are around the co-working space uh, there are some organizations that have meetups there and needed the food but they also want to be sure that they have enough food for them, and mostly that's more than they, they need it. So they are able to give that away uh, to the co-workers instead of throw that away in the trash bin. And if you think how many foods nowadays have been thrown away in trash bins, now we need more uh, smart software like CC Meat is doing to uh, yeah, spread the food around in the, in the world where it is needed. Uh, but yeah, this is a really nice one that we can produce 80,000 burgers by one stem cell. Um, by the way, the law in the Netherlands uh, currently prohibited uh, that it's be sold in, in shops. Um, I'm not sure for other countries. And you see that, uh, that uh, the law in the Western countries is always a bit behind, also with uh, the blockchain technologies and so on. Uh, um, they are currently discussing about your privacy on the internet. I already was in the 90s. So that's something like 30 years ago. Uh, so it can cost a lot of time uh, uh, to yeah, fix the, the law uh, before we have access to some uh, technologies. Um, so the countries that are um, the pilot, uh, in our economic system, the monetary economic system, uh, they have some kind of playgrounds because they are, mostly don't have those laws that are uh, yeah, prohibited to, to uh, use those technologies. So maybe we are a third world country in the future because of all our laws uh, and they are able to be a more first world country. If you can go to the next one, Tim. So this is a uh, website thing first. You can download 3D models over there and also share your own. Um, maybe you can use them in virtual reality as well. This is uh, mostly meant for 3D printing. But I think, yes, it's 3D model. So I think with some uh, um, software, we can also use it in the virtual reality world. If you can go to the next one. So uh, in the beginning you saw that I also was in virtual reality. So now it's more, uh, let's talk about virtual reality. This is the Vincent Rock Museum in Second Life. And this was um, 12 years ago, 2007, 15 years ago. And in Second Life you were able to create uh, the Van Gogh paintings because they are also in evidence that the 
right uh, are not there anymore because they're uh, you know is it English uh, the years uh, um, has passed that you that they were rise from it um, so everyone is able to create 3d 3d paintings from the 2d uh, paintings so that's also very interesting um, in this second live world we have uh, universities from all around the world with their students uh, visiting and you were able to walk into a Vincent van Gogh uh, painting, sit on a bed or be in a cafe and so on. So that was uh, far behind the, the time, uh, but really nice to, to look back at, back at it. Uh, so if you can go to the next slide. So more uh, actual uh, virtual reality applications uh, as example uh, that are able for free nowadays are, for example, on a punk house, also a museum, and in real life, uh, it will cost around five and a half dollars for kids. I think for adults, it's around ten dollars. Uh, but if you use the um, virtual reality app, you have the house privately for yourself and you can have more interaction with the house uh, and yeah all the stuff from uh, Anna that is there and her family that is there around uh, and the reviews for this VR application are the same stars four and a half stars as the real Anna Frank house so it's also interesting to see another application it's uh, uh, one that I have in my Oculus Quest. Uh, you can dance with a robot there. The application is called First Steps, introduction application from Oculus. And um, if you can go to the previous slide. I think it's not working anywhere. No problem. But uh, for the, the dance part, it's around 40 to 550. Uh, dollar for one lesson uh, per week uh, that you need to pay and uh, of course it's not really the same in virtual reality but um, every day it's going for the proper so there are also like hardware that you can wear a seat and feel the pressures uh, and that way your voice you is breaking up quite a bit sorry Tim? yeah re-enter the space maybe if if it's getting worse Do I have to re-enter or Tim or who needs to re-enter? I see the slides are going a bit too quick. If you can go to this one, is that possible? I do hear you good right now, actually. Does anybody else hear him good? How is his voice? Can anybody hear me well? Okay. Tim says my voice is breaking up. Yeah, sometimes it's cracking. I th but not so bad, I feel, but... Okay, well, in the previous slide there was um, uh, two applications. Yeah. One is from the uh, IAS station, so uh, you can go to space and, and learn how it will feel into space and how hand to handle all those uh, space spread uh, technologies. So you can learn that in VR. Um, so that is available for free on the Oculus, but if you have to pay for uh, being an astronaut uh, training, it costs around five uh, uh, million dollar. So that is a, a real big uh, comparison. Of course, it's not really feel the same as doing the training, but also with this one, it's going further, further, further. And it's like the first digital camera, which you will maybe have in the early uh, 2000s. Uh, and the resolution wasn't that well. Sometimes the software was bulky, and you will say, "Okay, I'm going to with my film roll just to the shop to have my my photos." But now nobody is doing that anymore, uh, and that will happen for this, for sure. The same with uh, like those courses to being an astronaut. You are not going to pay five million dollar anymore because you can do it in virtual reality for like it's feeling real in that uh, the near future. Uh, another one was, um, uh, I forgot the name, but it's to go into the blood cells uh, of your body. 
uh, so you deprecate your virtuality into the body and go around and can see how it will feel like a cell and also how prepared virus, viruses, uh, things like, like that, you will learn in that. And yeah, I would ask what will it cost to do that in real? But it's not possible in real to go into your own body and see your blood cells like as in the virtual reality application. So with virtual reality, we're also able to do things that are not possible uh, for real. Uh, so society is, uh, is changing. Uh, yeah, uh, new technologies uh, will create more uh, social development. It's going from ego to ecosystems. Uh, evidence is in the, the sharing economy. Uh, and uh, access is about ownership. So we share things instead of owning them. And crowdsourcing will be stronger than organizations. For example, Wikipedia is some crowdsourced uh, based initiative. And it's stronger than an organization was because yeah, uh, we could really grow them all away. We're going to see this more and more and more. We call it Society 3.0. If you can go to the next slide, then. So, yeah, now you have to see some uh, examples and awareness. Let's go to the insights. Um, next slide, please. So, yeah, they're all like, yes, but you um, must have brought on yourself, or the world is not changing that fast, or uh, technology is not for everyone, or it's not fun for me. Maybe you have other uh, yes, buts. Uh, if you can open the microphones, you can shout out some of them. It Just costs too much money. Now. Too much money? It costs too yeah, much money. This may be technology is not for everyone, what you meant, too much money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? The microphones are open if anybody wants to say anything. You know, most of the uh, establishments uh, push back against technology, like school systems, for example. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, so, the, some kind of pushback. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes, but does it make us happier? Uh, yes, this would make us happy. So, technology is not spreading for everyone. Some, some kind of that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good one. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, I was going to say, Jürgen, um, is it inclusive and diverse enough? Um, so, you know, technology. Is diverse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, there also was always just, uh, but by lifting all the value systems, uh, you need less money and less food shared. For example, this is a good example I gave uh, you. Um, and if you would say, okay, it's not going that fast. Uh, it can be blown away in uh, like days. So sometimes it costs a lot of years, sometimes it's only days and you won't see it. So Kodak says, oh, it will never happen. People still go to shops with the film, film walls and so on, uh, and then they get bankrupt. Um, it's not available for everyone, it costs a lot of money. Uh, so there's a lot of open source available uh, uh, software. Still, people pay a lot of money for licenses. I think even at Google, uh, yeah, we, we pay for Microsoft, Linux, for example. It's not needed uh, because you can download the open source Linux. Um, and there are so many examples in open source world. Uh, one of the biggest examples that people are using for their websites is called WordPress. So still some people pay a lot for, uh, let's say, open source uh, uh, content. Uh, management systems. But there are also people that say, okay, I'm, I'm going to download this open source uh, content management system and going to teach it. But then there's the hardware side, of course. Uh, and you're seeing that, uh, for example, with the 3D printing that was in 2014 uh, $10,000. Um, and in 2018, it cost only $1,000. Of course, still uh, a lot of money. 
um, but uh, there is a, a, yeah, like a law um, that says the technology is expanding in computing power every year, every one and a half year, but it's lowering the price every year, every one and a half year. So um, nowadays you can have a computer like we had in the 90s for something like two euro. And you can go to a shop, for example, AliExpress and say, hey, I want a, a Duo computer. And you pay like two euro. And there's so many computing power in the devices we had 20, 30 years uh, ago. So that's also very, you know, those kind of devices are, for example, used in the 3D printers to build a 3D print. So it's very interesting uh, to see that getting cheaper and cheaper. And also another possibility when it's the hardware is expensive, like the, the new virtual reality glasses nowadays. By the way, the virtual reality glass that uh, I had access to two years ago was a HTC Pi. It cost with a computer, I think, two thousand, two and a half thousand dollars or euros. And uh, nowadays I have Oculus for around 450 euro, uh, but the HTC 5 was shared in the permanent future lab. So somebody say, okay, I have it, I want to share it with others. Uh, you can experience it here uh, in some kind of shared library. Um, so yeah, it's not about that we said, not about the ownership, but the access to it. Uh, so the technology is also more accessible nowadays. Uh, then there was the fun part uh, question. So you say, hey, uh, will it be fun? Sometimes yes and sometimes no, but it's how we are using technologies. Uh, it's not the technology itself that makes it fun or not, uh, but how people uh, use the technologies. For example, a car, I can use it to drive around, uh, that can be fun, but I also can use it to kill somebody in the car. Then it's yeah, not for people. Uh, that's the same with other technologies. You can 3D print a gun, or you can 3D print a house. Big difference. Uh, so yeah, what will be fun or not? Also for yourself, uh, for example, if you're an education, a teacher, uh, maybe it's all very hard to learn all these new technologies. You can say, oh, it's not that, that funny. Uh, but if teaching is really your interesting motivation, then you can see it just as a tool, uh, and how you can teach by those new technologies, and then it's getting fun but your intrinsic motivation still uh, comes from the education uh, and not from the technologies, but by using the technologies, it's been getting more open. Um, so yes, and it's happening in every sector, so um, yeah, it should be better to, to be aware of it and to learn it. Uh, take it already happened a lot with the internet in education, but now even with virtual reality, it happened a lot uh, more and the kids, Want re uh, really want to, it's the intrinsic motivation to use technologies because they get more inspired by all the interaction they have than just letters from a book. Uh, so yeah, uh, you really need to think of that one too. Okay, if you can go to the next slide. Um, so yeah, Catholic thinking, it's about focusing on the, on the thinking and not on the old questions that we may have and the actions that we are doing by the... Um, so if we can go to the next slide. It's more in the uh, initial with this one too. Uh, so if we change our thinking by changing the questions we ask. So for example, uh, teachers in the Netherlands say, hey, we don't uh, earn enough money and we want money. And also for technologies that are very expensive to say, okay, we need money for those technologies. But that's not a correct question. So the question should be, uh, okay, how can we uh, teach children the best way? Um, so that's another question, right? And that was the question in the very, very past uh, when we started the schools. Uh, how can we educate uh, and teach the, the children the, the best way? And if we ask this question nowadays, uh, then we can see, okay, do we really need that much amount of money? And can we um, uh, share the technologies instead of 
getting getting that very expensive from the from the shops. Um, if you can go to the next slide. So how do we take action on that? You can go to the next slide. Uh, so how was I able to do this? Um, so I didn't finish uh, my school. Uh, I, I called middle grade uh, exams in the, in the Netherlands, but after that going to a more higher school. And I said, oh, I really don't like this way of learning anymore. And even during uh, middle school, I said, oh, I don't like it. Uh, I don't want to do my homework. I want to learn those new things, uh, technology things. So uh, I said, okay, go away books, let's go to the internet and learn something there. Um, and then for my sixth one, I was already on what was called bulletin board systems. Uh, it was a bit earlier than, than what we call the internet nowadays, but we were calling telephones plus computers. And already were able to, uh, let's say, share knowledge, share some software uh, with the platforms, and that was at my sixth. Uh, I'm 40 now, um, so in this early days, you didn't have payment systems, monetary payment systems online. So if I want to ask money, it was even not possible by the technology at that moment. So in a very natural way, we learned there to, to share. Um, in 2012, I was uh, able to come Google Top Consumer. And I said I had uh, one of the first Google Glasses in the Netherlands, and that was thanks to uh, being a Google contributor. And what is that? Uh, Google have uh, public forums. People can answer questions um, from others that had a question. Uh, and because I already had not a lot of knowledge about uh, the Google products, was able to answer people. And as Google said, oh, you're doing that so currently and so good. Uh, please be a Google Top contributor, and, uh, and there are 500 of us, and you can fly to the United States, pay for your tickets, you can see uh, the new technologies, and so on. So that's also a very interesting uh, one to teach to meet. We talked about workspace, but around 2012, I was mostly I was online, of course, I also did some socializing with friends, play football on the fields. Uh, no, not a first go, but in life. Um, but of course, also had online friends. But in C3, I was able to see people that understood sharing knowledge, things that you don't or not anymore. So I really like that one as well. Um, before we go to the internet, I was developing the Internet of Things Network. So I bought a router, a gateway, and uh, so that's I'm uh, sorry, you, yeah, yeah. my able. Yes. I, I yes. don't hear you very well. So is that with me or is that with everybody else the case? Maybe you can do a remote and see some oh, bad smoke. Oh, so they the, all not hear you very well. So maybe, no, um, well. Yeah. yeah, so maybe you can re-enter or can you reset the space, Tim? Do you know how to do that? Uh, only an admin can do that. But I mean, right. Jurgen is breaking up, but I can still hear him reasonably well. I mean, the point's coming across, but maybe re entering for Jurgen would help. Yeah? Can, do you know how to do that, Jurgen? I just. So we press quit and re enter. Let's, let's try that. Yeah, we can, uh, I can make some. Uh, I can make until you dare. So. Jurjen, tell me when you're back. But Jurjen, I, I know Jurjen, I think, already five years. And he's uh, really uh, one of the persons in Holland known for his uh, technology um, spreading, the, the love of technology. And it's really inspiring, together with uh, his co-worker, he's doing that, Samir Lahiri. And they both are very inspiring people who spread the love for technology and innovation and make it possible for everybody to to have this uh, access to this technology so it's really important work also and uh, for for free you know they believe that uh, if you can pay in social capital and you can pay it forward and that is so such a positive um, um, thing 
uh, that that this is spreading you know this is like um, how you say it when you have a like um, um, a, 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 a butterfly effect so and this this is how it works and 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 uh, we hope or I believe and that's also what they believe uh, that that we can share uh, we have a, we can have a world where we can just share and have all we need so we have food we have a roof a roof over our head and we have all the things we need and we just can uh, focus on what we love to do our, our passions so this is this is uh, yeah this is the vision uh, that Jurian is sharing with the um, and, and and that's why he does the things he's doing. He's still not back. So um, I don't know how much time we have left. A anybody has a question yep, about this? He's back. He's back. Ah, good, good. Jorien? We see you well. Hoor jij ons and see you also? Are you yeah, okay? Good. <laughs> but we don't hear you. <coughs> we don't hear you, Julian. Mm. Uh oh. Okay. That is. Let me see. What is going on? He needs to freaking reset it, bro. Be my guess. yeah, maybe. Um, it didn't help. It it made it worse. Poor, poor. This he probably exited the whole space and came back in. He should reset his whole headset. Ah, yeah. Is that what he needs to do? Oh, uh, thank you for um, advising that. So, what is the best thing he could do now? Just resetting his headset. That's what he's doing probably because that's why he's touching his head. Okay, I just share more information <laughs> about. So I know Ruben because of Seeds to Meet. He, he already told you a little bit about it. Seeds to Meet is this uh, um, work spot where people who work for, from, from home can join uh, together and sit in this place where you can have free lunch ma uh, many times and uh, just share coffee and sit with strangers at a large table, many tables, and they also uh, have a lot of activities there. And that's, um, that's Seeds to Meet uh, is now growing to a worldwide uh, principle. So it started in the Netherlands, but it's also now in, uh, in, in India and in uh, Brazil and in um, Singapore, there's a, there's a place. So where you can just pay with social capital without and, and, and just tell what you're working on. So you tell who you are. For example, I'm a coach and I'm working on virtual reality coaching today. Really and then people food. can just come to you and uh, ask you questions about this topic and they can learn from you so as well. So they, say they offer a possibility to you to, to learn from each other by just uh, providing this place, physical place. And now maybe this is also something we could do in virtual reality, you know, something like that, that we can have a um, virtual space where we really know what we do from each other and then join forces and, uh, and get uh, share knowledge so we can get better in what we do or, or we get it worldwide, spread worldwide. So then we have more knowledge spread and quicker also and uh, better. <coughs> so Jurian is still gone. <laughs> uh oh. Tim, can you just message Jurian, please? So uh, I, I'm not actually friends with him. Uh, okay. I could, so I, will I could just, message anything can, here, but I I messages him. Can you then take it over? Maybe say something to the public, and I will message Jurian to see where he's at. Uh, sure. I mean, this isn't my subject area, so it's a bit difficult. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just. To... I mean, there's, there's. Uh, I'm just having to quit. How many slides are left? Um, yeah, maybe you can. Yes. 
Well, there's Hello? there's another six. Ah. Oh, is it Jurgen's back? <coughs> Good. Yeah. I restarted my headset. I hope it sounds okay now. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we hear yep. you. We can hear you. And oh we yeah, and you there. Do you hear us too? Fantastic. Yeah, I hear you too. No, yeah, sorry but... for the glitch. I really don't know what what made it happen. But yeah, that's also with new technologies, things are not as working as you may expect it. And so the developers will fix the bugs. Uh, so uh, it's just the beginning of all those virtual reality things. But um, don't let it make you happen that something else not for me, because we have to try it out and report the bugs and so on. Uh, but okay, let's go uh, to the next and another slide side. So how they did it, uh, permanent speech lab and the IoT network, spelling about the IoT network. I shared my gateway and also asked the audience in my city Utrecht to share gateways as well. So at the end, something like 10 people uh, did that and we both uh, all in Utrecht. So that was uh, very nice. And the permanent speech lab is about sharing new technologies. So, uh, as Dana Maria said in the introduction, in 2015, Sumbi Lahiri and I started sharing at a teaching location, uh, things like 3D printing, uh, and all the people also starting to share virtual reality headsets, and so on and so on. And people have more and more access to all the technologies. And now it's even happening more around in the world, for example, in Bangladesh. Uh, there's uh, Al, since two years, he also shared technologies. All the people are sharing, and one place is a very poor country. But if they they can do it, you can do it as well. Um, so they they are sharing technologies. And I'm also very curious. Maybe you shared some knowledge online, or the e model, or you shared your house, or your car, or your bike. Uh, and we open the microphones and hear some <coughs> examples. Maybe someone already shared something. Yeah, the, the microphones are open. I shed my VR glasses sometimes. Well, cool. Anybody else? What? <laughs> no, I don't hear any other examples, but I know Carol with, with the company where it's working, they also share some uh, space for people doing a talk. So, um, yeah, of course, all kinds of ways to do uh, sharing. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. So most people ask, okay, what is the return on business model? Um, so it's a bit strange question. We uh, yeah, get used to that with a monetary system that we, if we do something, uh, we want to get money, and then uh, yeah, we count on that and, and calculate it. But by sharing, it's more about what's called serendipity. And serendipity is that you get something back, but you don't know when, how, why, and so on. So I'm sharing a lot, and I know I uh, see a lot of serendipity. And for example, the one with uh, Google. Uh, Glass that I had is the example of a thing I didn't expect it, but it's very relevant for, for me. And I was also able to fly to America and travel there a bit around, thanks to the Google Top Contribution Program uh, that I didn't know when I started answering questions on the public forums. Um, so, Serendipity is the business model here. And uh, maybe if you share uh, as a developer your code, Someone will enhance your code, and then you didn't expect that, but your program have more functions after that. Uh, it could also be a review that can help you. Uh, it's access to products and services where others are paying for, because the more you share, the more you will meet people that are sharing too, and that you will get insights of things you didn't know about. Um, yeah, also be a paid assignment, so you're sharing something, and people say, wow, you have a lot of knowledge about this. Uh, can you go to our office and give a presentation on that? And if it's in a closed environment, maybe you can ask some uh, speaker fee. Um, but yeah, in the end, you will also discover more abundance uh, thanks to, to the sharing. If you can go to the next slide. So, 
So uh, how people learn and how can you learn? So from reading books, you only will know 10%. Uh, but for example, by relating it to your own experiences and discussing and practicing those things around, you will learn something like 50 to 70%. Uh, and at the end, when you really care about it and going to explain to others, then you will even learn more thanks to that. If you can go to the next slide. So the action you can take is uh, ask yourself the right questions. We already talked about uh, as a teacher, don't go say, okay, those technologies are that expensive for, for my uh, class, uh, it's never going to happen. Uh, it's not necessary. In the next slide, we'll see why. Uh, pay at least 20% uh, with your time in those other value systems than uh, in a monet monetary way. So if you're working for five days at school now, say, okay, I'm going to work for four days, and uh, I'm going to use it all the day, for example, to share my knowledge online uh, and see what is going to happen, and maybe here on virtual reality on stage. Um, do this with other unknown people, which is very easy here in virtual reality. You will uh, learn a lot and meet a lot of new people. Um, and yeah, the knowledge sharing, don't ask money for it, but uh, it's using social, your social capital. So for instance, if you go to the next slide, for the 80% you will be still in school. Uh, ask yourself, uh, and maybe you have technology at house, uh, at home, uh, and your chil the children, the uh, students, to share the technologies at your class. Uh, so, for example, I was with a group of uh, children around eight years uh, at the mobile office, and uh, I gave them some lessons over there. But before I did, I asked them, okay, who has new technologies at home. And some say, okay, I have a robot dog, or say, I have a virtual reality glass. Uh, some say, I have a smart computer, they all want to say, okay, pretty deep with that. And I say, okay, we need to share those technologies with all other students so that we can learn from each other. And it's also important for them to see this because uh, they uh, have to learn about this new economic sharing system and not only about the monetary. So you give them economic class and your own knowledge class with technologies uh, with this action. Um, and you can also ask about the knowledge. You don't have to be afraid that you don't know anything about those technologies as a teacher because the children already know so uh, much. Right at the end, uh, that he's learning from his child, uh, from his son, if I remember well. Um, so children uh, yeah, know a lot of things, so they can explain to each other, and also you as teacher can learn a bit uh, about that. And it's not a problem that you don't know anything about those technologies. It's about how uh, you know this, how you give the lessons to them, uh, and not, not uh, the technology itself. Uh, so the costs, what I've done, I'm say this, those technologies are very expensive for virtual reality. You can uh, use pizza boxes, uh, cardboard, or Google virtual reality cardboards. So you can create um, a virtual reality class with your students to sell. Say, hey, if you had a pizza, take your cardboard from the pizza to school, and we're going to create virtual reality cardboards from them. And there are free uh, open source instructions shared uh, on the sites of Google and so on, how to do that. Um, and then you can use, for example, the Google Expeditions platform, where you can explore Tornado, the Mount Everest, the Looper, and 900 more expeditions with the students. And besides the Google software, a lot of more virtual reality software to explore. So is it expensive? No, so Dynamic it's not expensive, it's not necessary. Of course, if you really want the most newest virtual reality headset and nobody's able to, to share that, because maybe no one in the class will, will have that, yeah, then it could be expensive. But sometimes you don't need the most newest models. You can use the cardboard as well for a good experience. So, slide, please, Tim. So, that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, also, this presentation is shared. Uh, there are some camera bots here that will share this presentation online. 
uh, but also the slides. I will share them and post them on the social media and in the groups of the virtual uh, reality in education uh, summit. Uh, and there are a lot of people and organizations that help with it as well. And especially today, uh, Tim and I'm real world, but also behind the scenes, a lot of people from uh, from the summit. So thank you, Tim, Dana Maria, and uh, also the people in the list, uh, which do a great uh, job. And uh, maybe you have some questions, but I think we're also a bit out of time. Can we do some questions here, or should we go to another? Uh, no, room? actually, the, uh, we need to start with the next uh, presentation. I'm sorry. Yes, I Maybe understand. you can, uh, the people who can uh, follow you to the uh, PIP room can have questions uh, or not. They cannot follow you totally to there, but maybe to the uh, beginning of the hall. Mm -hmm. well, should we go? Maybe you walk a bit more or do you have to help somebody else? I have to, no, I have to help Heather. Heather is the next one. The Heather is, Heather okay. is coming there. It's going to be the next bit. A big hand We've... for you, Jun. He did thank a you really all. great job. Yes, and great he's job, very, yeah. thank, thank you. you. Thank you so Thanks. much, Julian, for your presentation. We are really happy that you were here. And now, Let's go to the next. <laughs> High five. <laughs> High five. And now we're going to go to the next presenter. Let's see what happens if we go to the active. <laughs>